Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Deborah Eckerling, author of Your Goal Guide, a roadmap for setting, planning, and achieving your goals, and creator of the Dev Method, which is my system for goal setting simplified. I am all about the goals, the personal, the professional, event goals, mission, motto, figuring out the life you want so you can make a plan to turn into reality. And guess what? You can't get any of those things unless you are healthy. And here we have this week's topic. So every Sunday night, I lead the Gold Chat Twitter chat. And then Monday, I bring in three friends to dive deep into the topic. And then on, so on Thursday, it magically becomes an episode of The Deb Show. And so today we're talking about health and balance and well-being and everything in between because I was going to say especially now, but really like always, you need to be healthy because if you are not healthy, if you do not have balance, you spin in circles, burn out, it's no fun for anyone. And fun is also one of those keys to success. So I have a wonderful panel today of, of pro-health people. Okay, we all should be pro-health people, but particularly uh, fans of a health imbalance and spreading the word about that value they're in of. So I'm excited. We've got with us, first of all, we've got Howard Brown. And Howard, we should like wave hello to our Zula friends, because if not for Jeff Pulver and the crew, uh, you would not be here. So thank you for chiming in. And also we have Carmen Miranda, who I met through a different social circle through our mutual friend, Alina Friedman. And, and Carmen, we met like not even a year ago, but I just remember like the first time I heard you speak and talking about visioning the healthy life you want mm -hmm. and going for it. I'm like, Carmen's my people. Yes. And then we have Jen Santos and Jen and I have been friends since college. So just fair warning, we may start inside joking at any time. You're warned and you're welcome because it will be especially fun. And this is like the power of LinkedIn. Cause like I said, I've known Jen for many years. Yes. And a couple of weeks ago, she reached out on LinkedIn and said, you know, Deb, we should probably Zoom. We haven't talked in ages. And I'm like, you are so right. So thank you for watching and reaching out and for joining today, because, oh my goodness, we are going to have a fun, 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 <laughs> fun. Now I'm going to let my guests introduce themselves because other than saying they're awesome, I don't know that I did them justice. So let's start with you, Howard, please introduce yourself. Let people know who you are, why you are here and why the topic is so important to you. Yes, uh, Howard Brown, Deb, so glad to be here. Uh, we were introduced through our uh, Zula little mini mastermind group and, and Eugene uh, Barlez actually uh, uh, connected us and I'm really thrilled that he did. We've become good, uh, good buds and uh, trying to move, uh, move positivity forward. So I'm, uh, I really think that's great. So um, uh, the short story is that I'm Howard Brown. I'm a serial technology entrepreneur. I'm a two-time stage four uh, cancer survivor and, uh, and and living a good life, putting Humpty Dumpty back together again. And uh, I'm a big patient advocate uh, as well. And uh, health and balance are uh, are not as hard to get to as you think, but they are necessary. And uh, I'm thrilled to be here with, uh, with Jen and, and Carmen as well. So thank you for having me. Well, and thank you for being here and for shouting out to our friend Jean, because I should have said that before. So appreciate the correction. And you have oh so stories so looking forward to hearing them again and for you sharing them so carmen welcome great to see you yeah so happy to see you thanks for having me happy to be here with all of you um yeah i'm carmen i am founder of intuitively fit 360 coaching i'm a women's holistic uh fitness and wellness coach um i essentially help women who are struggling to release and keep off weight or struggling to maintain their energy. But honestly, most of all, women who are just struggling to sustain day-to-day -day healthy wellness practices in their life for the long term. Um, I've been in the industry over 15 years. And what I really found is that so many women are like jumping into intense fitness plans or like extreme diet plans. Um, and then they end up getting injured or mentally, emotionally burnt out 
or they're gaining the weight back and they're like stopping completely. And it's just this vicious cycle that goes on and on. And it's just not healthy physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. What I found is that I really believe that the reason this is happening to so many women, myself included at one time, is that those specific plans are not in alignment with who we are as an individual. So I really work based on the belief that in order to sustain wellness, you have to know yourself. It's a really deep self-awareness. So the women I work with, I really encourage them to listen to their body's cues, really strengthen their intuition and deepen their self-awareness on what's going to work specifically and enjoyably for them. And I am really excited about this specific topic today because it is all that I do. It's about, you know, I it's like what I believe in truly and what I work on within myself daily and what I preach to the world. <laughs> so happy to be here with you guys. And that's exactly what I was saying before, how when we met and you said this, I'm like, you're my people, because it's it's true with your business goals, but for your life, for that balance, if you can't see it, you can't create it. Absolutely. And taking that time to see it mm -hmm. will help you create it. Absolutely. Yep. Awesome. Okay, Jen, your yeah. turn. Yeah, Welcome. thanks, Dan. I'm so glad to be here with these um just these great other with Howard and Carmen on this call today. And so I'm Jen Santos. I'm actually a systems consultant as well as a work life integration coach. And um, I work with non technical small business owners to help them get their systems moving better so that they can have better work life balance and better work life integration, because we aren't a work person and an outside of work person, we are a single person. So we have to figure out kind of like what Carmen was talking about, we have to find the systems and the processes that work for us. And so that's really what I'm all about. And I actually took it a bit to an extreme. I'm originally from the US, but I moved to Brazil because I really wanted to be able to kind of live the work-life balance lifestyle. And so I do my work from here and every day walking out on the street is just a reminder of how important that is to me. Because they do balance like nobody's business in Brazil, they, right? They really do, yeah. <laughs> it, and part of why I thought you would be great for this is that you know you help people have better balance but you also have to well i think everybody here you have to practice what you teach because it's sort of like i know the dev method works i created the dev method using the dev method you know living by the rules we set and and you have done the samba method which i think is a hilarious will you tell people what that is yeah, so what the Samba method is, is kind of the approach I take to doing my systems consulting. So I really think that work should be fun and entertaining and Samba is can't be any more quintessential Brazil than Samba can you. And so Samba stands for systems, assessments, mastery, balance and action. And really, you need to have all five of those things if you're really going to have a well balanced life. And so I had a previous life also as a corporate wellness consultant. And I really have this affinity for what I call keyboard athletes, which are people that spend way too, it's going to swear there, keep it family friendly, but way too much time at a computer. And so I really want to be able to help those small business owners. Um, and I think the Samba method has worked really well to make that happen for people. Very cool. And so I want to, so raise of hands. And I don't know if you're going to answer this, Carmen, but we're going to find out. So of the people in this room, how many have had like more than five incarnations of themselves? Four, three, two, one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this has always been the thing that you've done, Carmen? Um, no, actually, I have a dance background. So I started dancing from like young. And so first was dancing. And then I really thought that that's what I was going to do as a career. And then once I started noticing my other friends going into like, you know, dance as a career entertainment industry, I realized that it was taking the fun and the joy and the passion out of it for me. So I realized that's not what I wanted to do. And then I was a bartender for a little while. And then I started working at Equinox Wellness Club as a receptionist. And it was from then when I started really understanding more about the body and wellness and, you know, creating relationships with the trainers there that I stepped into personal training first. And then as my life started to change as my spirituality and you know all those things changed i really moved into like holistic health coaching and took everything that i've learned over those years and made it a much deeper more valuable practice i believe so yeah it's been quite a journey for me too 
Okay, so at least it wasn't like I was born fitness person. No, a it's, little bit better. It's so I, funny. My mom says it to this day. She goes, you know, I've known you your whole life and I would never, ever, ever think that you would be in the fitness industry because I wasn't into sports. I hated gym class when I was young. It wasn't my thing. For me, it was about dance. But you know, as I got into the industry, it became much more deeper with creating these relationships with the women that I help and really helping them see changes in their life and and from myself as well and really learning how important uh, wellness is from a spiritual, a, a physical, a mental aspect. And it just kind of became my mission, I guess, without even well, thinking about it. <laughs> and, and you know that dance is my absolute favorite form of exercise. So yeah. you, you were in alignment there too. So yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. And so Howard, you've had like epiphany after epiphany. So where did you start and how did you get here? I, I appreciate that. So um, I, I have always been an athlete. So I've always been athletic and basketball is my happy place. And uh, But I do skiing and biking and hiking and lots of other stuff as well. And, uh, but unfortunately, two times in my life, I uh, had that dreaded, you have cancer diagnosis, uh, and very drastic stage four, uh, not Hodgkin's lymphoma when I was 24 years old. Thank God, I have a twin sister that gave me her bone marrow transplant, saved my life, and I was able to uh, go 26 years in remission. And then uh, since we're in colorectal cancer awareness month, um, I got screened at age 50 and uh, I was diagnosed with stage three, which turned into metastatic stage four uh, colorectal cancer. So even the healthiest person um, can, can really have their life altered. And uh, quite frankly, uh, I am striving to uh, you know put the balance back in my life as I, I call it, putting Humpty Dumpty back together again. And um, I, 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 when you get a, you know, in life, you know, we've all been challenged now by COVID and, and I have the multiplier effect of uh, dealing with a, a very significant cancer diagnosis that I am quite frankly blessed, lucky, and grateful uh, to to be alive. And I need to make the most of that uh, opportunity uh, that I am what's considered no evidence of disease at this time over the last uh, little over two years. And so, you know, when I think about it, um, and I, you know, when I was a kid at age 24, and now at age 50, you know, a dad and husband. Um, a lot of things got thrown out of whack. So my emotional, my mental, intellectual well-being, my physical well-being, uh, financial well-being, occupational well-being, relationships, diet, nutrition, spiritual, environmental. So I think I covered all 10 of them. But uh, really, really, uh, it, it takes time and um, you have to work at it. it. It doesn't always just come to you. So um, I think out of the three of us, I am the uh, I'm the uh, the role model patient here that um, need, needs work. Um, so I need, I need to kind of, you know, fix myself and I'm continually trying to do that. Well, on that note, we have our friend Jean popped up in, in the comments who said, thank you, Howard, you will always inspire me with your will to move forward no matter what's in front of you. And I think that's the key. It's not just finding, it's keeping going even when you can't, right? It, it is, and it's mental toughness, and there's a lot of things that go into it. You have to have your own, what I call, uh, blueprint uh, for survivorship and just living life. And uh, it's uh, it's an individual thing, but you have to have motivations behind it. And quite frankly, the reason that I believe it's so important to talk about you know health and balance is that goals are vital to it. And you are the goal queen with the yellow stars. And so I, I think that we need to really start to dig down in a few layers into that. Well. And thank you. Um, I appreciate that and glad that you are here. So Jen, I, I feel like I'm cheating because I've known you for so long, but I'll let you tell your fitness background and how you got to the you that you are now. Yeah. So um, I, much like Carmen, completely non-athletic, asthmatic little kid, hated sports, went through college, still hated sports. Um, and then when I was actually 21, my mom died suddenly at age 47. And so that gave me this, oh, people don't live forever kind of moment, right? And I really kind of turned the ship around at that point. I remember actually talked to Deb the day <laughs> that my mother passed away. I was supposed to take her grocery shopping that night, which didn't happen. Um, and so anyway, besides, so I really became, started to focus on my physical health. I started going to the gym, started doing, you know, step aerobics classes and all those sorts of things that we did back in the day. 
Um, and I eventually started, I went after my own physical fitness certifications. I became a certified kettlebell instructor, um, nutrition, all those sorts of things. Um, and really became, and then at the same time, I entered corporate America. And I was like, oh, this corporate America sitting all day thing isn't really very good for us. <laughs> and so I really started looking at like, how can we make the workplace better for people? I was like, okay, like I started looking at, you know, like, what we can do with our eyes, getting up regularly, all these things, right? And I call them like the keyboard athletes, aches and pains. And I was like, okay, like, let's try to start reversing that. And then you kind of get out of the path and you get back on the path. And then with the pandemic, like, I think there's no better time than now where people have such an awareness of the importance of all the different aspects of health, physical health, mental health, emotional health, the toll that the workplace takes on us, not only physically, but emotionally and the environmental and then for marginalized people you know the impact that that has as well and so i really and i also think that small businesses is how the change is going to happen mm -hmm. um i don't think it's a top down i think it's a bottom up kind of change to see the change that we want in this world interesting but in in for businesses to because i talk about this and i speak on this as well the well-being in the workplace um, whereas the leaders need to lead by example, mm -hmm. it is also um, the employee's responsibility, if you will, if they don't like the situation they're in, to like open their mouth and say, hey, buddy, I'm going to leave if there aren't changes. So I, I agree it's, it's a top down and bottom up, but it's really, it's like an everybody thing, right? Mm -hmm. It is an everybody thing. The leaders have a responsibility to model it, but we also have a responsibility as employees or as small business owners to also define our boundaries, you know, and, and if we can define those boundaries and we start making that the norm, then that's how we move the needle. It's every one of us taking a tiny little action that really starts to move the needle because the CEO can talk until he's blue in the face, but if the people st don't start doing it. It doesn't matter at all. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean your health choices start with you, right? <laughs> I know. How annoying. Uh, well, I, I kind of your membership just doesn't do it. <laughs> I talked over you. Please repeat that. <laughs> I said a free gym membership from your boss doesn't actually automatically make you healthy. Right. That's true. You actually have to go or those. What, and, and then there's the other aspect online. Well, and I know you know this, Carmen, because you couldn't teach in person until recently. And now you do outside is you can work out from anywhere. You just yeah. have to turn on the computer or the phone. And so not only is it necessary, it's more accessible than it's ever been so much more accessible yeah i was doing everything in person and now and even like the in person that i do now i'm doing like uh workout classes you know i'm doing some pilates classes here in sherman oaks on saturdays um but that's just a small percentage of what i do my work actually continued to merge and stay on uh you know virtual in the virtual world i have like a fitness app now so people can access all their workouts and their habits and their coaching and stuff through the fitness app so they can be on vacation in hawaii and if they want to work out while they're there they have access to it so it's like so 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 accessible now you just have to find that intrinsic motivation to say like i'm gonna do this this is for me and then go ahead and do that you know because it's, it's there it's accessible you just have to want it so no excuses but you do have to want it yeah you and, have to want and it. so how do you you can't make people want to be healthy right or no. can you so, um <laughs> I don't know if that if you can make people want to be healthy, you can provide them with the education and the materials and things like that. And you can help them by, you know, asking them certain questions for them to come to their own conclusions of why it may be important for them. But you ha they have to want it for themselves and they have to see why it's important for them to go ahead and do it. That why. Right. We always got to come back to that why when there's a goal. So, you know, it's about guiding them to find the answer of the importance from within themselves. I like that. Well, I like all of this stuff. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I like the top. You're enthusiastic. Of course I am because it's important. And it starts with, and usually I say this at the end of the show, you know, the people, if you're watching live or the replay 
or you're listening to the Dev Show podcast, you've chosen yourself because you want to lead a healthier, more balanced life. You want to work towards your goals. So let's go back to that first step. So Howard, what is that first step, do you think, to being healthy? So I will tell you that um, when I, when I, after a major cancer surgery, just walking out to the mailbox with the dog and getting the mail and walking back, that was my first step. But I took the second step because the dog wanted to walk further. And uh, I worked up to a mile and a half. And um, But I, I, I wanted to get, uh, you know, it's freezing cold here in Michigan, but I wanted to, it was starting to become springtime. And I, I, I actually wanted to, I was self-determined, self-motivated, and that counts for a lot. Um, and so uh, I wanted to uh, get my stamina back and, and get my health back and clear my head from everything from being a patient to uh, transforming back to a healthy lifestyle in person. And um, it just doesn't come. It just, as you said, you know, you can have a gym membership and uh, they count on you not going and they take your monthly fee. Um, so you have to have a plan. And those, that plan relates, relates into goals and you have to execute on those. So if you want to lose weight, um, how are you going to do it? You can exercise more, which is recommended, and you can eat more healthy. Those are basic steps, but no one's going to force you to do it unless you have a, you know, a, a challenge buddy or someone else to do that with, which is not a bad idea. So um, it's uh, it's taken work, and um, I, I didn't step back up on the basketball court day one and and, and think that I was actually going to be, uh, you know, making it happen and uh, you know becoming an all star again. But I took real work, and I've done it, and I'm, I'm continuing to do it. So. Uh, uh, I'm very proud of the steps that I took and the path that I've taken. And it wasn't a short path. This all didn't happen overnight. This is how for the, the last two and a half years to get myself back to where I'm feeling physically, emotionally well. And that included, you know, relationships of, of wheeling out negativity, weeding it out of my life. And that unfortunately was family and friends um, and situations. So the first step is the actual step. But the second step is to realize that sometimes people aren't out for your best interest, even when they're related to you? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I'm saying is that, uh, that uh, yeah, you, you have to be able to, uh, you know, you want, to, you want to clear the way. And so negativity provides roadblocks and hurdles. And you either have to, you know, take a few steps back or go around them, go through them, go over them. You, you have to figure that out. And sometimes distance creates that, uh, eliminates that negativity. Um, you know, positivity with action is really important and allows me to uh, achieve more and feel better. And that's that's what happened, uh, you know, during some of the journey. So. And so, so how are things now? And have you reintegrated some of those challenging people, or did you just get rid of them? <laughs> well, some are family. So you, you, what what I now do um, is that. Um, coming out of COVID and uh, is that, you know, we're now going to be seeing each other, not just on Zoom or a text or, or a message. There'll be real, real physical meeting. Um, no, I always re remain polite, but as far as the interaction goes, um, we spent two years hibernating, my wife and I. And um, and uh, as you said, you saw my moniker shining brightly. I, I have a lot of good goals coming up. I have a book, a website, a podcast, all launching in the next six weeks. I'm so exciting, all that hard work. What'd you do during COVID? Yeah, I, I dictated a book over Zoom that became transcripts, that became chapters that I'm gonna share my, my memoir. So I'm very excited about kind of hitting the uh, finish line on the book, but the starting line as far as getting the word out there and trying to inspire people and uh, encourage people to, to positivity with action. Yes, you in action without the positivity is gonna fall flat. Yeah, I, I think that you can be positive all you want, but it's it's you have to <laughs> the, the action is the really important piece. So if uh, you know that that's that's the part of of, of checking off uh, small goals, large goals, and uh, big goals, right? That's you're you're the you're the expert there. You you have to be able to show uh, progress and 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 maintain that progress, score that progress, and and figure out where you've started and where you've ended up and. You know, if you've ended up uh, going in reverse, you want to know why and see if where you can fix that. So, Jen, you've been nodding about the whole positivity action thing. So I'm guessing you have thoughts. <laughs> Me? Yes, I do. Um, I just think it's it's um, there's getting to be a lot of neuroscience that's coming out talking about the importance of having these positive thoughts while you're trying to do something just because the brain and the body are not two separate mechanisms we're all one big integrated mechanism 
you know, a huge amount of what comes to the brain actually comes from the gut. And so by remaining positive about things, we can actually lower our stress levels in our body. And when our stress levels get lower, then our inflammation goes down and it actually, our body starts to recover more quickly. And just the basics, when you're excited about something and you're looking forward to something and you're positive about something, you're a lot more likely to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go running today and I hate to run. Oh, I get to go running today. Like, which one sounds happier? <laughs> rhetorical, rhetorical. Yes. <laughs> when you get to do the things. Well, and that goes back to what I do. You know, to get what you want, you need to know what that is. If you don't take the time to figure out the life you want, you're going to be on this hamster wheel of misery. And no one wants that. And I think with in talking about the lifestyle and being healthy and having more balance, finding the things that get you excited, you will do it. Mm -hmm. And you will never, ever hear me excited to go golfing unless it's like putt-putt. Um, what, what gets you excited? What gets you off away from the keyboard? We'll start with Jen and, mm -hmm. and working out. What, what is that motivation for you? Um, living in brazil i live right on the beach so going out to see the water is a big one for me but i actually also really love going to pilates class um and i found an awesome instructor just a couple blocks away and so i really enjoyed going to class and having a little bit of interaction from pe with people working at my desk all day long it's just really nice to leave the house and go and engage with people and engage with my community so those are the kind of the two things like non-physical results reasons why i love to go and work out Okay, but let's talk about the non-working out working out because you do that too, right? Meaning? Like, like music and things? Oh, I mean like, okay, sorry. <laughs> um, yes, like, so you're talking about like my drumming, I think is what yeah. you're referring to. I spend my Saturdays drumming in a Thumb Reggae Street Band, which mm -hmm. actually is also a workout in and of itself because I have a 20 pound drum strapped to my waist for five hours. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so that's what I see. I warned you people. <laughs> if you don't give the right answer, this is why it's fun to have friends on the show because if they don't give the right answer, I can like prod them. Right. Until yeah. I give it. But, but like I said before, I think dancing is like the best workout. Mm -hmm. um, and I did, you know, pre COVID, I went to hip hop class every week in New Jam. And people will look at me and like, Deb, hip hop, really? Um, yes, because it's good and it's healthy and it makes me happy. So there you go. I mean, so doesn't Carmen, like you just spoke to Pilates. Some people start their day with meditation, prayer, mm -hmm. um, and Pilates or stretching. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, that's, that's a, a very good way uh, to, to get the day off started. If that's, if that's what you want to do. I'm mm -hmm. more of a physical activity guy. I'm a hiking, biking, basketball type of guy, but, um, Everyone, if you got to find your, you got to find your sweet spot. You're, I call that the happy place. Mm -hmm. yeah. Always looking for the happy place. So your happy place is sports. It is a hundred percent, and and more specifically, the basketball court. Because my my guys don't treat me like a, a cancer patient or sick. They trash talk me, and uh, and I feel that I, I my mind is free there, and I'm, plus I'm working out and. Um, and, and, and I found my passion and that's my passion for working out. If I had my one, one choice, it's basketball, but I, I love biking and hiking and um, soccer a little bit too. So. And so Carmen, as someone who helps people work out, what, what's up with you? What yes. motivates you? It's so Ooh. funny because it changes like, the way we change as humans, <laughs> you know, from, you know, one day to the next, what I feel motivated by and what I enjoy changes as well. And so I have to constantly honor myself where I'm at. So right now, um, what feels really juicy for me, you know, I'm from New York City. I've been in L.A. now for probably like a year and a half. And in New York City, you have tight knit city life and it's cold and it's winter and stuff. So like my way of working out would be to go to the gym. But now that we have sunshine, well, not today it's raining, but now that we have like sunshine and like beautiful weather most of the times of the year, I love to get outside. So hiking has been a big one for me as often as I can get out and go hike. That feels so juicy for me. And I just feel so amazing afterwards. And honestly, like I've been really enjoying the reason I started like those those Saturday Pilates classes 
was to get to know people out here. So it's the social aspect of that as well, right? So I like love my students. I love the ladies that come. Some of them have become friends. Some of them become hiking buddies. So, you know, for me right now, it's like, what can I do that is social and fun? And also like, what can get me in nature and in the outdoors and to really help me to connect with myself? So like I said, it changes. Sometimes I'm like really intensely weightlifting. Sometimes I'm like doing spin classes, but right now hiking and like social fun, kind of um, movements and exercise classes are what, what it is for me in this moment. And you can be social even working out online. Yeah. It's not sure. like like a boring thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. There's so many different ways to do that now. So many people are putting together group programs online and, you know, there, you know, if you, there's so many Zoom classes online. Um, people have Facebook groups and communities where they're coming in there and getting that motivation and that support from each other. There's so many ways that you can do it. You know, you just got to have the drive to go and find it. So we're talking about balance. And I figure since we're talking about balance, we need to talk about the work part. Because we've been talking about the exercise and the life part. So where do you find balance in your work life? And I'm going to start with Howard because he seems to be the most challenged by this. So let, let's help Howard. Let's help Howard because Howard came off of being a workaholic, you know, and start at startup technology startups and uh, and working just uh, nonstop. That was uh, besides uh, my wife sat me down and said, you want to have a baby? We actually have to, you have to be home for dinner. And that was my big aha moment <laughs> in 2000. And um, I, I started to be much more disciplined about that. Um, the one thing with COVID is that uh, we definitely are having more dinners together. Uh, we're empty nesters. My daughter's a junior at University of Michigan. So um, we're, we're better, I'm getting better. I'm learning the time management aspect. It, it is so easy to stay connected. Um, you know, we via our, our mobile phones and, and online today, you have to, it has to be a discipline. And I'm getting much better at that discipline of when to just shut it down. But it's still, I'm as guilty as anyone is that, you know, well, I, well, I answer an email at uh, two in the morning, probably, but I got to change that. And um, I got to change my scorecard big time. And I'm, I'm learning. It's, it's a, this discipline is not easy to, to do, to break that away. When I, when I do my sessions on finding balance when working from home, that is the first boundary I set. I say, pick a time to stop responding to emails, but you can also pick a time to stop looking at them. So that's like the cheat. You can say, I will not email anybody after like eight, and then maybe you can give yourself till 10 or so because, you know, left east, other coast. Um, it is a little bit later, but like just to keep your eye on the ball. So I'm going to give you that as a bonus goal is to set stop times. I got an email last night from one of my editors asking if I wanted to take a story. And I said, no, nope, you are not writing her back till tomorrow, which I did. And, and yes, I said yes. But but you need to i think setting the boundaries even if they're they're um elastic a little bit it's going to help you so that i, would I be appreciate that so i'm learning as as i grow younger right that the pacing is it, pacing matters um and uh you know it's it's important so that is a discipline and it's it's uh it's one that i'm still learning at, at, at age 56 mm -hmm. and after all i've been through well I still think you're doing great. So Carmen, what about you? How do you find the balance and or do you have a tip that you want to share? Seeing yeah, how absolutely. Fixing um, Howard. Yeah, I want to kind of piggyback a little bit on what Howard said, and I do want to name something. What I want to name is something that I've found in myself and in a lot of friends and clients that I work with that, you know, in the last two years, we've learned that we can do everything virtually pretty much. Like, it's so easy to do things virtually. We can work from home. We can work from vacation. We can work from everywhere. And that is amazing. With that, though, when we're not setting boundaries around it, it's very easy for us to expect ourselves, for our bosses and our clients to expect us to be accessible all the time because it's just so easy to like check an email or go online and stuff. And so what I'm noticing is that so many people are actually going more into burnout because it's not like they're actually leaving an office. They're like not really checking out of work from the computer because their home has become an office. And so there's 
I'm navigating that in my own life as well um, as teaching it to people in the sense that um, I have found that, you know, I can coach and I can train and stuff online. And so when I've been traveling and stuff, I'll take a client here, I'll take a client there. So I'm not really, I wasn't really allowing myself to shut off completely, right? And that will take a toll on you without even realizing it. Even just taking one session while you're supposed to be on vacation, having you time can really pull away from that and drain. So I, you know, set a little goal or an intention for myself. It was my birthday two weeks ago. My boyfriend and I went on a little mini vacation and I really set the intention to shut off completely while I'm there. No clients, no emails, no answering any messages, anything. And I even made that clear to whoever I was working with before I left. Hey, I'm taking this birthday time for myself. So if I don't respond to you, it just is what it is. I'll respond to you during this day, you know, and I really stuck to that. And when I tell you that that was so important and I felt so good that I did it. And I felt like I really needed it. It really helped my energy and my relaxation and my presence with my partner while we were on vacation. So it's really just so important to set that boundary, even if you're working from home, if your boss is asking for you to like you, like everyone else is saying, stop at a certain time, stay, stay in those vacation modes and really separate from the screen time and the work because it can really, really drain you if you don't. And taking the time off on the vacation, you know, I get, I gave you, I give you gold stars for that. That's great. W one thing I, I will say is make sure you take some of every weekend off. Mm -hmm. I don't expect anybody. I mean, I do a Twitter chat Sunday night. So if I'm doing work on the weekend, usually it's Sunday. So Saturday mm -hmm. I could do nothing, but when you can take at least one day off a week, like a whole day, mm -hmm. because there's nothing like that. Yeah. And Jen, you're nodding again. <laughs> I'm just agreeable today. No, I, I think I what Carmen said about going on vacation and this idea of, I know so many people, and I've been guilty of it as well, is like, well, I'll just work a little bit in the morning before we head out for the day, right? But it does, it tears you away because, A, and if you work with a team, it's actually awful for them because you end up leaving your team in this unknown space, like, will Carmen show up or will Carmen not? Will she respond or will she not? Like it's better for you and your team if you're like, nope, I'm just unavailable. It's better for your clients because they don't know if they can expect to hear from you. And it's better for our own mental health because otherwise you spend two hours afterwards thinking about that email that came in or that message you responded to. And it just is so invaluable. My trick, Howard, actually for checking my email is I have two different email apps on my phone. One is for my personal emails and one is for my work email. And my personal email app stays on my home screen because, and then my work email app is actually three screens in <laughs> with the notifications off. So if I want to go and look at my work email, I actually have to go and hunt for it. And I have found that that has made a huge difference because, because I have to go, it's not like, well, I'm checking my personal mail and oh, there's a work email. So I may as well look at it. Um, it's really, really helped me. So that might be my my goal for the team. Nice, nice tidbit. I, I I will tell you that um, Deb, in order to uh, I I printed out this wheel. Oh, and cool. It's, it's, it's and, and, and in order to do homework for preparing for this, uh, it was ten aspects of health, and and um, I took it a step further, and I looked at where I was, you know, socially, where friends, and coming out of COVID, and I gave myself a score of one to ten, and and because I want I needed to know where I'm at. And spiritually, physically, emotionally, um, purposeful living and, or positivity, environmental, occupational, nutritional, fiscal, and intellectual. And I put a score of one to 10 on there. And I looked at where things are, if they're low score or higher score. And, and then from there, I can launch into goals as to where, where I need to work on. Because mm -hmm. I'm not going to be able to do all 10 things in one day. And so mm -hmm. I found that to be quite helpful in looking at this, um, the 10 aspects of health in general and and to see where i'm at there because i'm rating pretty high on the physical aspects and and uh and the purposeful stuff and i mean i got a kind of other work to do so i'm kind of setting my my uh, my plan my goals here as to where i need to go there and I, it was helpful so we'll share this we, we'll share the wheel out with everybody uh, uh later i will put it in the recap which you can find at the deadmethod.com blog uh, to get the links, watch the replay, and read the highlights from it. So be sure to send that to me, Howard, so I can include that I in will. the show notes. That would be amazing. Thank you. Jen, we did not ask you how you find balance. 
Um, I find balance. Um, we lost track of the question. Um, I find balance by actually scheduling time during my day to go for a walk. Um, that's something I'm very privileged to do because I don't have to work in an office space, but I find time during the day to go for a walk. I schedule my meetings to have breaks between them. So a 45 minute or a 25 minute meeting. So there's always time to get up and go and do something. Um, and then because I'm in Brazil and I tend to be off of a lot of the US time zones from a work standpoint, I have a lot of time in the morning where I'm kind of able to do my own thing before the rest of kind of the US gets up. And then I also say, okay, like this is the time of day that I'm done for the day. I'm sorry, I'm in another time zone. And so I'm able to kind of set those boundaries that way. Just geographic proximity helps me a lot with that, to be honest. Well, and it's smart. And, and this is, I, I think I, I mentioned this to you, Jen. I started doing, so I've got at least one or two days a week when I don't have any calls so I can do my writing and communications work because it doesn't get done unless there is a whole day with people not. And I love people. I could talk to people all day. I mean, part of what I do is working with people in workshops. But by having one or two days where people can't get in touch with me, I, I don't want to say I'm forced to do my work because I love what I do. But work gets done a lot faster when people leave you alone. Mm -hmm. But you do. we do not all have the privilege of living in Brazil and having four hours before the world gets up. So there's that. So you have to claim it and do the thing for yourself. Uh, what I, and I love to ask this question and we didn't actually get to it. So I'm gonna ask it now before we jump into the goal portion of the conversation. I, I would love for you all to share a story about yourself, something, and it can be something recent, something you learned over the last two years, or you can go into the Wayback Machine. But what is an anecdote from your life that you can share that really embodies who you are and why you do what you do? Garmin, can can we start with you? Sure. Um, honestly, an, an anecdote that really embodies who I am and something that I've learned over the years and particularly in my journey with fitness and wellness as a trainer, as a coach, um, is really trusting yourself really trusting yourself, trusting what you know, what you need for you. Um, there's so much information out there, so much amazing information, so much information that may be supportive for us and some that is not so much. We can take little grains of salt from the information that's out there and then just like learn to try little bits of it on ourselves, but trust that you authentically, individually know what you need for you. Um, you know, in my journey in the industry, I spent many times, like I said about, you know, women that I, I work with or I have experienced, um, you know, trying different diet plans and fitness plans and, and, you know, feeling like I need to look like something or be something because I'm a fitness trainer. And then at the end of the day, what I realized is that that's all outside noise. And um, I am who I am. Um, I know what I need to feel good, to feel healthy, to feel alive and to feel energetic. It all comes from within me. And um, yes, I can gain some support from a different coach and finding that, which is what it, what's inside of me. But only I know myself and only you know yourself. And so just really being able to trust that you have the answers to what you need um, is so incredibly important. Nice, nice light bulb. So Jen, <laughs> what what's a good light bulb moment for you? Yeah, mine actually kind of builds on what Carmen was saying, which is this idea of trusting yourself and knowing who you are. I mentioned I live in Brazil, but the reason I ended up here was a, my husband is an amazing Brazilian man, but is really because I lived in Seattle for the 12 years prior to coming to Brazil. And Seattle is very much a hustle culture, right? Oh, kind of a, um, a live to work culture, very, very busy. Everybody's on their phones all the time. I mean, it's a big hiking and outdoors culture, but there's a giant, giant component related to work. And I realized I am really likely to fall down that slippery slope if I stay there too much. And so part of what I had to do is I had to sit back, look at who I am, understand my tendencies and the kind of person I am and know that I need to get out if I want to lead the life that I want to lead. Um, I had burned out previously. It was a really long path to come back from that do not want to go down that path again. And so now as I'm looking to go forward, 
I've kind of gone, I've mapped out like, what are my goals? One is really important to me to have a flexible schedule so I can go outside, so I can go for walks during the day, the ability to control my schedule. I also don't mind buckling down and working super hard when there's a deadline too. It's not that, but really getting to know myself and understanding the work environment that I need to thrive has been my work and will continue to be my work and support others because they're going down separate paths. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. I mean, most people don't move to another country to have balance. So go you for going that, you know, the gold star for going the extra mile, Jen, <laughs> or how many thousands of going the extra thousands of miles, Jen. But no, knowing yourself, who you are, what drives you, it, it goes back into the greater conversation about health and balance. If you know what you want, whether it's for your life, for your fitness, your goals, whatever, then you can make that plan. If you don't take the time to figure it out, you're going to be spinning and not in a good way. Right. So do you have another great story for us, Howard? Well, I would just say that you have to be honest with yourself and you have to, you know, I love that of trust when it's talking about self-care. So you, you can, you know, totally say that you're not, you know, a workaholic or you're, uh, you know, you're drinking too much or you're eating too much or you're not exercising enough. Uh, you got to be honest with yourself there. Um, I, I would say that uh, you want to be authentic and honest with yourself, but you want to be intentional. So, um, you know, they, they advertise to go to the gym uh, on New Year's Eve and, and everyone signs up. And then by the end of January, they know that the numbers are 50 percent or less that actually show up. So um, it's, it's really important. Um, I, I, uh, I always knew that um, I was um, mentally tough. And, uh, and physically tough, but when you're thrown at, at, at the, the world in the last five years that I've had to deal with the chemotherapy and side effects and uh, surgeries, uh, I took it to a whole new level. I looked down deep inside myself and I could have just given up and I didn't. Um, and I didn't for lots of reasons, you know, wanting to see my daughter graduate high school, now college, and then eventually, which I will do, walk her down the aisle, but um, also more to accomplish. I can tell you this, Never was it on my bucket list to become uh, a published author, and, mm -hmm. and yet here I am. So you've got to be able to uh, be able to be nimble and, and pivot all these great buzzwords now to be able to redefine yourself. And I'm in the process of doing that, and I'm very excited to uh, share my story and uh, help and inspire folks. I get in the sense that you're really excited about your book, Howard. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like I, I can tell you as the only man on this, I've never birthed a baby, but I'm birthing a book. I'm gonna tell you, it's it's uh, it's 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 a uh, my 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 editor and publisher said there was 901 steps, and they weren't kidding uh, to publish a book. And you know, Deb, you published yours too, so it's it's really it's really uh, it's a baby, and I'm gonna birth that baby in May, so I'm very excited. Yes. Well, and so you'll love the fact, I think I got my contract in March of 2019 and my book came out in January of 2020, so nine months. Yep. Except oh. my child is yellow with red. Your child's yellow. It's a beautiful child. <laughs> Isn't she beautiful? Anyway, um, but that's why it's important because of the pivoting, because of the nimbleness, you still have this goal to impact change and to help the world. You're just helping it in a way that you didn't realize it was gonna happen. And I think that's, well, I think that's pretty much everybody's goal. It, you know, you need that mission behind what it is you create and the way that you you make it happen may change, but you, you're you still essentially the who of who you are. True, but I'm not going into an office ever again. Uh, I'm not working for a corporation ever again. I'm redefining myself and I'm gonna hit the road on, uh, on speaking gigs and uh, and and uh, book signings and uh, and and helping people via consulting and coaching to to leave an inspired life. Go Howard and go Jen and go Carmen because you're all doing this. That's why you are all, all here is not just living your life but inspiring people to have a better, more balanced, a happy life. And with that, now we do get to the fun part where where I would love you all to gift a goal to the audience, something that they can do today, tonight, tomorrow to live a better, healthier, more balanced life. So Jen, what goal would you like to gift? I would like to gift the goal of um, do not bring your phone to the dinner table. Ooh, that's a good one. 
simple, easy to follow. Actionable, very simple. Yes. Fantastic. Carmen, what is your goal? Yeah, to add on to what you said earlier about um, creating like a, t a stop time for work, like the, I'm done working at this time, I want to invite everyone to create a ritual around that. Meaning when you're closing out your work day, say for instance, okay, 5 p.m., I'm completely done, to kind of train your mind and your body to like close it out here and actually go and enjoy the rest of your life. It can be something as simple as just lighting a candle or cleaning your desk or looking at the calendar for what's the to do for, for tomorrow or just you know, finding some sort of ritual that you do consistently every time you close out your work day so that your mind and your body understands what is happening and is processing it so that you can actually close that down and go about your day-to-day -day life afterwards. Awesome. Great elevation of the concept. That's fantastic. So what goal would you like to gift, Howard? So this is going to be a little bit different. I, I, lo I love the fact of uh, no... Uh, no machinery at dinner and uh, and being able to set that ritual. This is a little different. Um, we, we lift ourselves by lifting others. I'm going to sell uh, to the people watching and listening to reach out to someone in your network they haven't talked to in a while and do a check-in and do, try to do a Zoom because you're not close by and and really find out you know how they're doing and, um, and, and uh, expand your network and, and see what they're doing. But uh, there's, there's lots of people that you can choose from, but um, friends, family, you know, casual relationships. I think that's a really good thing to, to do. Well, Jen and I did that two weeks ago. So I can see do, that. do we need another one? <laughs> you might. And actually, this is one of back pre pandemic when I was doing more in person workshop and, you know, we got out more. I would always say that one event a week was a good goal. And now I say at least three, but if you want to cheat, it could be one's an outreach, one's an event, and one's a one-on-one. -on -one. So just find different ways to connect with people and stay in touch because you can't reach your goals on your own. You need your people. And speaking of which, I'm going to now give you all the opportunity to share a goal that you are all working on. And I think we're going to start with you this time, Howard. What is, I know what you're going to say, but you can say it anyway. What's your goal, Howard? My goal is to successfully uh, get this book launched. Um, Sh Shining Brightly is my life's memoir. And um, the last line in the book is, is Shining Brightly uh, makes the world a better place. And so my goal is to successfully launch a book, website, and podcast and, uh, and tell my story to the world and, uh, and put myself out there. Nice. And good on you for doing that. And so, Carmen, what is your goal? My goal is to ask more, to ask more for what I need, to ask for more support, to ask more for what I want, to ask for conversations. Um, yes, just really stepping up more and stepping out and, and asking for what's going to, to support my life, essentially. That's great because if you don't ask, the answer is always no. That's right. Give people the opportunity to say yes to you. That's yep. great. <laughs> and Jen? Yeah, so my goal is I'm working on building out my community and my network. As Howard talked about, I mean, we've all been talking about this here, but when you increase your network, you know, not only is it meaningful for you as a person, but somebody could be going through a problem issues of their own and knowing that somebody out there cares for them is reaching out to them is a big deal. We also know that there's a lot of benefits just from reaching out to people in connection. A lot of good dopamine happens that way. And so there's huge benefits to that. And so I'm really working for this year to um, work to increase my network. And again, being in Brazil, primarily via Zoom. <laughs> the great goals, everybody. I love it. So where can people find you? Jen? Yeah, so you can reach me. I'm on LinkedIn every single day under Jen Santos, or you can also reach me at my website, which is jensantos.com. Excellent. And Carmen, where can people find you? Yeah, so I'm very active on Instagram. You can find me at um, intuitivelyfit underscore 360 underscore coaching, or you can go straight to my website to intuitivelyfit360.com, where you can email me. And I also have other socials linked at the bottom where you can find me as well. Fantastic. And where is the best place for people to find you, Howard? 
Well, I see you have uh, LinkedIn, which is perfect for right now, but it, within the next two weeks, shiningbrightly.com um, will, will be available and people can uh, learn about uh, me, the book, and uh, uh, speaking opportunities and then master classes and everything that's coming with the full package. Great. And I'm at the Deb Method everywhere. And you can go to the debmethod.com slash goals to learn about how I can help you, your business, your organization, uh, set goals and achieve them. Or if you are a more uh, DIY person, you can grab a copy of your goal guide on Amazon or your favorite place to buy books. And unique goals for your work, for your life, for that balance. Because if you don't set them for you, if you don't choose yourself, it's never going to happen. And they... <laughs> I don't, I thought that sounded really gloom and doomy of me, which is like the opposite of me. Let me try that again. You deserve to live the happy, well-balanced life that you want. So claim it, make a plan, do like everything everybody said on the show and then some, and you're golden. And so what final tip would you like to leave people with? Um, we'll go back to starting with Howard. Keep shining with kindness. Keep shining with kindness. Love it. And what about you, Carmen? Celebrate every small win. Celebrate yourself every single day. Even if it's just closing out your day, find something to celebrate. Oh, and that really works with your, like, your ritual, right? Yes, exactly. So your end of the day ritual could be celebrate mm -hmm. something and then enjoy your night and then you start over tomorrow. That's right, yep. Fantastic, and Jen, what's your final uh, tip? Uh, my final tip is turn off the notifications on your phone. Just Ooh, do it. Ooh, a practical mm -hmm. one, that's yeah. good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I tell you, I put my phone goes on silent every night because years ago and this is how scarred i am like 15 years ago i had a boss who would sometimes call me at eight in the morning um it's a good thing because i mean even though it's usually <laughs> usually it's spam but it's a good thing that i picked up that habit because every now and then i'll wake up and i will see <laughs> a notification or a bunch of emails or phone missed calls so turn off not just the notifications turn off the ringer and even better and I'm not going to do this, but I should, you know, sleep because my phone's my alarm. Mm -hmm. But you really should sleep with your phone across the room. Bonus goal for someday when your alarm is not your phone, I guess. I don't know. This has been a wonderful conversation. I cannot thank you enough, Jen and Howard and Carmen, for, for taking the time, for choosing not just yourself, but my community to share your tips and your thoughts. Um, any last words? Thank you for this opportunity. Okay. Your inspiration, okay. your inspirational, Deb. Ah, you're sweet. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, thank you so much. I, I really think we had such a great, well-balanced conversation on health and balance. So thank you again, Howard Brown, Carmen Miranda, and Jen Santos. And thank you for choosing yourself, for listening, for watching, for saying, I want to reach my goals and have a balanced life. Go on there, go for it. And remember, you can do it. Hmm.